Hey, Weather Warriors, come on in to the Weather Lab. We're going to be talking about our next chance for severe weather. Is it going to be a tornado outbreak again? Hail? Wind? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode for Wednesday, the 22nd. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you're a weather enthusiast who likes detailed, educational, long-range forecast breakdowns, much more so than you would see on TV. Share this with a friend and also comment below, how many tornadoes would you consider a tornado outbreak for a single day? Did a little research poll for the channel to make things more accurate for you guys. And also follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, opening up a Twitter for this channel now. And so uh, check that out. Follow me on there at Cody Irvin WX. We're going to get right into it here. So what we're looking at is the SPC's forecast. I'm going to give you mine in a second. But they got a slight risk for much of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi again, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and then a marginal risk all the way around that with a hatching area, which includes significant severe weather potential for Texas and parts of Oklahoma. We're going to recap the previous outbreak here in uh, Mississippi and southeastern United States on Sunday. A lot of wind reports here, a couple of hail reports as well, and a few tornado reports from Louisiana into Mississippi, with one strong tornado report in Mississippi. There was a very, very strong one, maybe even two. And if you look at the SPC, what they said, they had a moderate risk all the way out. So it really didn't verify on the eastern side of this thing. The media was going absolutely nuts on this, and Twitter was as well. I just wasn't quite buying into the hype. Uh, the SPC, they're awesome at what they do. But this particular event, I just had disagreements, especially the eastern side. And if you look at my forecast, I only had that area at a two out of five. One out of five around that, and I had that bullseye right in Mississippi and Louisiana. So I think that played out pretty well, except for the eastern side. Even I overdid it. While I underplayed it, like I, you know, I, I, I you know, I was kind of downplaying the whole thing, uh, the whole time. If you looked at my previous video, and it was even less than that. So, lots of storms going up at once sometimes can ruin the tornado potential. So, let's just get right into the next uh, outlook here. This is going to be for Wednesday, and these are the analogs, and you can see that there's a 45% chance or a 45% probability of severe weather within 110 kilometers, okay? And uh, so a decent area with our analogs. And our analogs in the previous setup did really well. You know, that was the tornadoes there. And then you can see the tornadoes. They did better than the SPC did in that situation. And the wind was really accurate as well. How about the wind for this one? Well, we got 15, 30% in Texas. So, you know, a uh, Pretty slight to moderate kind of uh, ordeal there. Hail, 15 to 30% in Texas, Oklahoma. That looks pretty accurate. And then uh, we got tornadoes, the tornado potential, 10% chance within 110 kilometers. So a slighter chance for tornadoes, but mostly in Southwest Texas. Again, analogs, those are the similar events. So this is not the models, it's similar events in the past that look like this setup blended together. This is uh, one of the analogs that I picked out, and this was for... I believe it was April 9th, 2009. Actually, I think I chased that day. But, you know, it, this is kind of what I'm thinking it could look like, except it's going to be much further southwest, and there's going to be more storms along that front in Texas. Uh, and maybe not quite as many tornadoes, but, well, four is not that many. But uh, that's kind of similar to that, maybe a little farther southwest. Another top analog, nothing. So, alrighty then. So it's going to be kind of an interesting setup. This is what I got for my tornometer index. Can I have a little fun with this on the channel? This is for April 22nd. Uh, this is essentially meaning uh, what we were going over earlier. Two chances out of five within a 100 mile radius. I might be changing that soon, but right now we're just going to say 100 miles. I've got this area at a one out of five chance, which is essentially if you add it up to 10 percent and then a 5% within a 50-mile radius, and about a 2.5% within a 25-mile radius. The area of highest potential here is northeast Texas, southeast Oklahoma, and the east part of uh, Arkansas, where I have a 2 out of 5 chance in a 100-kilometer or 100-mile radius. So bullseye is going to be in the just to the east of the Ar uh, Texarkana, Tar Texarkana region right there. So that, I think, is we're going to be the best chance for tornadoes in particular. Now let's look at the thing hour by hour here, the, the ordeal here. We're going to look at um, the general jet stream pattern for, you know, Wednesday around 7 p.m. And then we'll look at 4 p.m. when I think things will start to fire here. 
kind of got a positive tilt to the trough. Now, typically with a positive tilt, it really does lower the severe potential, especially tornadoes. You usually get these crashing cold fronts that disrupt the, the dry line, the, the warm air, and kind of pinch off the moisture. And uh, so this is going to be a fast moving, progressive type system. But a lot of other things are in place for severe weather, despite this positive tilt to the trough. This is at 4 p.m. We're looking at the trough here, and this is in the Southern Plains. Lots of wind shear, okay, upper level winds at 50 to 60 miles an hour blowing those updrafts or the uh, moisture or the precipitation away from the updrafts so the storms can keep building. And you got some good divergence, good lift in the atmosphere. There's gonna be some uh, decent activity out ahead of this thing around 4 p.m. on Wednesday. This is the moisture. You can see your 60 dews. That's your 70s, actually. Your 60s are this line right here. Your warm front's probably in this zone right here. Your cold front right here. And then perhaps a dry line here. But what's going to happen is your cold front's going to catch up to that dry line and cut it off pretty rapidly as it is up here. So the dry line will kind of start off early in the day, but this cold front will surge south and cut it off. And that's going to really lower the tornado potential. You can see how this cold front's kind of oriented northeast to southeast. And your flow is kind of going across it. So that, that does help severe potential a little bit as it blows storms into the warm, moist air. That's going to set up the potential for eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, western Louisiana, and potentially the southwest portion of Mississippi. Those areas along and south of that warm front and ahead of that cold front have some potential for some severe weather, particularly hail, some wind, and maybe an isolated tornado or two as well. Your low pressure system sitting right up there, your moist axis is going right into that thing. You got your warm front and your cold front and your dry line. So your best tornado potential is probably going to be up near that moist axis, but also perhaps another area down here along the cold front and closer to whatever dry line you do have by that time. This is the theta E axis. This is kind of an over kind of a overview of instability and moisture in the atmosphere. And typically where you get your strongest uh, storms, well, not necessarily strongest, but you do get a decent chance for storms is right on the tongue or the ridge of that theta E axis and moisture axis. I'm really looking at this area right here. If we do get a storm and the moisture isn't too pinched off by that cold front, we could see a decent, at least hailer form up there or potentially a tornadic storm that will have some issues with cold air. The, the cold fronts typically undercut tornado potential. But if we can get enough moisture up there, we could be dealing with a little triangle uh, in uh, the northeast portion of Texas, southeast Oklahoma. Could be dealing with a tornado potential for a couple hours, few hours, and that will track to the southeast. And then a slight chance of a, at a tornado or two along that cold front as well throughout the evening, and it will progress east as well. Very dynamic environment with shear out ahead of this thing. But again, the cold front, the progressive nature, that's going to limit the tornado potential and the pinching moisture, very narrow, going to limit the tornado potential a little bit. Not a whole lot of moisture up, or theta E up there, but there is moisture and elevated instability. So I still think parts of eastern Oklahoma and the northeast quadrant could see some isolated hail. This is the wind at 850. This is just off the deck, plowing in plenty of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. You can see along that cold front, it's it's drier off, off just off the deck. So if you look at that cold front right there, the low-level jets displace just a little bit to the east, and it's blowing westerly winds in. So there could be uh, some issues with that, and probably going to have some kind of grungy, maybe potentially elevated storms undercut by drier, cooler air along that front. Front's a little bit farther. You know, the the uh, best shear is a little bit farther to the east. So really not seeing a huge tornado potential in Texas, even though there are some dynamics supporting it. And I'll show you that in a second because it is pretty nuts. So this is the instability uh, shear crossover. This is your instability, your surface base cape. This is the surface heating. All those areas right there in south, that's enough for severe weather and potentially tornadic activity. You can see where these winds are at the surface and then at the in the jet stream, they're at like out of the west, so there's a lot of directional shear and changes in the atmosphere. So plenty of wind shear. If this wasn't a cold front, it wasn't so progressive, positively tilted, could be dealing with a decent tornado event. 
your cape, this is your most unstable cape, so this doesn't just include the surface, it's measuring different layers of the atmosphere, and you can see it's much higher up here. Well, what does that mean? When you don't have surface cape, but you have mo most unstable cape, well, usually that means you have the potential for elevated severe weather. And elevated severe weather does not usually include tornadoes. Tornadoes need surface cape usually to really get going, but this could indicate some hail, uh, maybe some isolated wind gusts, but particularly hail is usually the cause with this type of setup. So Northeast Oklahoma, Western Arkansas, maybe in Southwest Missouri, potential for some hailers and some uh, embedded thunderstorms. Obviously to the South, it's gonna be very potent. Most unstable Cape, this is going to be now, so we were looking at 4 p.m. Now we're gonna look at, a, well, let's say 10 p.m., 3Z. You can see that this is shifted and the cold air is shifted to the South. And this is gonna put areas in Mississippi, Southeast Arkansas, all of Louisiana and all of Southwest Texas under the gun for some severe weather, particularly hail, but there could be an isolated tornado threat here in Eastern Texas and Western Louisiana, maybe maybe extending out along that cold front, but most likely area, area is probably gonna be out here uh, with that tornado threat. Again, mostly a slight to moderate chance, maybe a few tornadoes maximum with this type of event. But if you look at the holistic, the storm relative holistic, this is measuring the spin uh, in uh, the wind shear, tornado potential, kind of uh, measuring the spin for thunderstorms and, you know, mesocyclone development, potentially tornado development. And look how high it is, talking like five, 600 in some areas. So this thing is really, really high. But this is 21Z again, so this is 4 p.m. again. It, it's a little bit ahead of that, that cold front. You know, your best moisture supply or really tight packed gradient there. Uh, but you can see it's kind of out ahead of this thing. But still, it's it's pretty impressive, and it's in that zone I was talking about. The LCLs, this is measuring how low those storm bases go. Obviously, the lower, the higher the tornado potential if you have the other ingredients in place. And you can see it's near the floor. It's near the ground out here at 250 or so, 500. So that's plenty uh, low for some supercells and maybe even some tornadoes. Significant tornado parameter at 4 p.m. You can see how high it is. All you really need is a one for a tornado, and you got some areas. It's at four, five, six, maybe even seven in some areas here in southwest Texas. But the lift, the storms, will probably be out here. There's might not be a whole lot of storms or storms that root to the surface way out ahead of it. Your, your best fronts are out here. So you need those fronts to get those storms to pop. And obviously, you see right along that moist tongue I was talking about, right there is your highest tornado potential. But because of that progressive nature of the front pinching off that moisture, I mean, you can kind of imagine it like a zipper. It's going to keep zipping down and pinching it off from north to south. The tornado threat up here is going to be very brief. So you might get a tornado warning, but it's going to be very brief. The other issue is the jet streams blowing the storms north out of that warm front pretty quickly, too. They are blowing into the warm sector, that's a positive, but it could blow off that warm front pretty quick. And like I said, brief tornado threat, but if we can get a storm to manage to produce a tornado, it could rapidly develop with this sheared environment we have and decent instabilities in some areas. But again, it's gonna be brief. Uh, this is the dew points, I think we already went over that. A sounding, so this is going to be in Southern Oklahoma, Southwest Oklahoma, and you can see the soundings here. This is the vertical profile of the atmosphere. The wind's out of the surface, out of the southeast, or southwest, but at up top, it's out of the west-southwest. Lots of turning. PDS tornado. There's a couple of soundings that indicate a particularly dangerous situation tornado, which indicates significant tornado potential. However, again, you have to look at a lot of other things, like this pinching that will occur. But like I said, if you can get a tornado to develop, it could, if you you do get one, it could be very rapidly developing, very fast, but it could be brief as well, not long lasting. Further into Texas, you can see the potential for tornadoes a little bit lower, but there still is a potential for tornadoes as the soundings indicate here. Lots more instability and the directional shear is pretty good as well. There's some veer back veer signals, which could indicate miss messier storms. So the wind's going from the Southwest to the West Northwest back to the West Southwest. That could indicate kind of a messier storm mode. The sin, this is the capping. So where are storms going to form? Well, it looks like the best area is going to be inside this white area, which is where your cap's going to break. 
So this is kind of right within this area, but that will shift to the east later into the night. But you can see where that elevated tornado potential was, but it's a little bit capped and there's not a front down there. All right, so this is our hour by hour look. This is 15Z, 45 hours out. You can see, or uh, 15Z, so that's like in the, in the morning. But here's the issue. There's storms ongoing in the morning in the warm sector here in Southeast Oklahoma and in parts of Texas. Now, if these storms are overpowering, that's really gonna significantly lower the tornado hail wind potential up here in Texas, or uh, up here in Oklahoma. If we go at 4 p.m., you can see some redevelopment now behind this main complex that moves through. So a couple of isolated severe storms at 11 p around 10 p.m., you can see this main area moves off to the east. The, the storms will move to the east, might remain capped in southwest Texas, but your best severe potential kind of within this area here. And then after that, they'll continue to move to the east. So what I'm really thinking is the best tornado potential, like I said, within that area, a couple of isolated tornadoes potential around it. But again, maybe one or two in that area that maybe one, uh, you know, that is greater than weak. We look at the 72 or the uh, let's go through Thursday here at 8 p.m. The precipitation amounts, you can see a lot more rain again, one to two inches, maybe some areas in the southeast receiving more. So, you know, obviously there's been some flooding out there, but we could be seeing some more uh, rain, especially Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, eastern Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and maybe even Georgia. So lots more rain again coming through the southeastern portion of the United States. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Again, click subscribe below, share this with a friend, and tell me how many tornadoes you think are in a tornado outbreak. I'm going to try to adjust based off your guys' opinion. So when I make these forecasts, it can kind of fall into what you guys are expecting. So with that said, share this with a friend. Hope you guys enjoy your weather and see you soon.